coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Church, he will send the rain at the right time. He's never late. All you need to do is step out. And once you step out, you find out the rain is going to drench you like never before. Church, we are stepping out. Glory be to God. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just lift our hands to Jesus. Thank him for his word this spell. Thank him for the grace to minister the word without any distractions. Tell him your heart is open to receive from him. Amen. Today's message is titled Financial Dominance Part 3. If so, dominance means power and influence over others. Genesis 1 26 to 28. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. We found out that dominion or dominance has always been the will of God for man. God wants us to subjugate. God wants us to subdue. God wants us to take control over things that are contrary to the covenant in our lives. Amen. To dominate means to have power and influence over something. It means to be the most important or conspicuous person or thing in a place. 
to have a commanding position. Our second text was from Deuteronomy 28 and verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Amen. We found out that we have a dominion identity. Poverty is really more of an identity crisis than an economic crisis. We said God has willingly opened up his good treasure unto us. And the good treasure is the heavens, the storehouse where he keeps his rich blessing. We said the heavens are permanently open by the key of the blessing. As long as the blessing is upon our lives, the heavens are open unto you. Somebody say amen. Well, if it's a storehouse, it means it contains something. So in part two, we found out the contents of the storehouse. The contents of the storehouse is the rain. God opens his good treasure to let down the rain. And we said that that was relevant to them in an agrarian economy. But in our economy, what is our rain? We found out our rain is the word of God. The undiluted word of God pouring down from open heavens is our rain. And this rain is a covenant connection between God and us. This rain brings the abundance of heaven to the earth. This rain is a differentiator between us and people who are not in covenant. So we treasure the rain, we value the rain, we know the rain is God's gift to us from open heavens. Amen. Today we're going to ask a question. What time does it rain? What time does it rain? Now we know what the rain is to us. Each time we speak now, when you hear rain, make sure your mind is not just on water pouring from heaven. We're speaking now about your rain, which is the revelation word of God. So we're learning from this natural Israel. We're applying it to spiritual Israel. Amen. Amen. So what time does it rain? Do you have the ERV version of Deuteronomy 28, 12? Would you have that? Do you? ERV. It's up. Wait. All right. Let's read it. The Lord will open his storehouse where he keeps his rich blessings. He will send rain when? I can't hear you. You're whispering. He will send rain at the right time for your land. He will send rain at the right time for your land. He will send rain at the right time for your land. He will send rain at the right time for your land. The rain is never late. The rain is always on time. The rain is never late. The rain is always on time. And that has been our testimony in TCC, right from Royal Evangel Church days. The rain is never late. It's always right on time. There was once I read an email here that the former accountant sent to me. Do you remember? The content of that email, what was she saying there? Pastor, you would just say, this project needs to be done. And she was the accountant. So she would see the budget of the project and she would see the accounts. I know the money was not there to carry it, but we'll sign off and start. And once we started, the rain always came just in time and the projects were always finished. For many years now, we've been speaking about the next phase of the auditorium project, which is putting up the scaffolding. We've finished buying the roof. The roofs, in all the roofs are here. The different components of the roof. It was now the scaffolding. 
which became a huge cost on its own. Well, I'm pleased to announce to you today, and you'll hear more about it during the budget, that we are starting the scaffolding phase. You didn't, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Your response shows me I want to know those who are who are believers and those who are doubters. I said we are starting the scaffolding phase. What is our confidence in starting the scaffolding phase? He will send the rain at the right time. Turn to someone prophesy to them, the rain is never late. Your rain is always on time. Whoa! Church, he will send the rain at the right time. He's never late. All you need to do is step out. And once you step out, you find out the rain is going to drench you like never before. Church, we are stepping out. Glory be to God. Who is stepping out with me? Amen. The rain is never late. It's never late. I want that to sink in. It's never late. Look at what the message translation says. Sometimes I like reading several translations. Because they bring out different things, as long as they're not off the truth. Message. God will open the doors of his sky vaults and pour rain on your land on schedule. Let me say it again. The Lord will open the doors of his sky vaults and pour rain on your land. That would have been good enough. He opens his vaults and pours rain. But he says he pours it on schedule. Who is a builder here? Where is building? Where is building? There you are. Are you hiding? Are you not a building? So they're not going to ask you for money. Is it building? I'll stand up. Let me show you. Charles, I've said it before. See, is a building? He like her asking for rent. He's a builder. One thing a builder does is he wants, draws out the schedule, right? Pastor, we're going to finish this project in one more. From here to here, the windows will be up. From here to here, yeah. from here to here, the roof will be up. There's a schedule. Whatever schedule. That's why when Sonny was saying to him, I was wondering what Sonny was doing. So that project, you'll finish it. Why am I confident that you'll finish it? Because the rain comes on schedule. When you are building, listen, it is the responsibility of the owner of the project to provide money for the builder for the schedules we made, right? So if other engineer other is building for us and he gives me a schedule, in that schedule, he and he fire will come together. It's fine, just there you are. And that conflict. They'll come together and bring the invoice. We're at this milestone. Pastor, we need the check. And no matter how I complain, if we don't provide that check, I can't hold him for not meeting the schedule, right? So it is my responsibility as the owner of the project to provide funds to the builder. So when I read this, I got excited. I said, well, any divinely inspired project in the kingdom of God is owned by God, right? So God owns the auditorium project. So therefore, it is God's responsibility to provide us with the funds to build the project, right? Wrong. I say it is God's responsibility at the owner to provide for us to build the project. 
right? You're not saying right again. But you wouldn't you would, you would, you would ask about, if you say it wrong, what's the answer? Wrong. The Holy Spirit took me back to Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. Listen, in any divinely inspired project, God is both the client and he's the builder. It is not God providing money for me to build. Get this. God is the owner and God is the builder. God is the client and God is the contractor. So all we have to do is show up. Just show up and believe him. Taking us back to a prophecy we got some years ago. The auditorium is not man's project. It is God's project. He doesn't expect you to pay for it. He expects you to believe him for it. These are deep things. If you meditate, then you get it. I will build my church. I am the builder and I am the owner. Yes, he's referring to the body of Christ. But within the body, any divinely inspired project, you know, it is God that gave it to you. God is responsible as the owner and as the builder. All you had to do was show up with your faith. How many of us have shown up with our faith today? You on your own cannot build this thing. If you contemplate building it on your own, you run away. I will build my church. And every project inside you, the church, God is responsible for it. All you have to do is believe. Amen. Somebody say, I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. Listen to this. The one whom we go to for help, he began, if you're right, you write this statement down. The one whom we go to for help, he began, funded, and completed the greatest project ever. The one whom we go to for help, began, funded, and completed the greatest project ever. He is the one who made heaven and earth out of a wasteland, a tohu babuhu situation. And he did it on schedule in 16. He is the one who made heaven and earth out of a wasteland. A tohu babuhu situation. And he did it on schedule in 16. And how did he, how did he do it? Same way. By the reign of the word, let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. Six days. And the greatest project ever was completed. We can trust him with divinely inspired projects in our lives. Amen. 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 Look at the King James Version now. Or the it's 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season. That expression, in his season, 
follow me is what we saw as on schedule in the message, is what we saw as at the right time in the ERV in his season. So his season is the right time. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? He sees it at the right time. So does it mean that God, follow me, has predetermined the season that is the right time for you? Does it mean, and no matter what we believed, no matter what we did, God had set it that 2023 was the year we will step up and start the scaffolding section of his auditorium. Had he preset it, and all we had to do was watch. So that means I can believe him, for example, for a baby for 10 years. If God has said my baby is coming at the 11th year, no matter what, it is the 11th year when my baby is coming, and there's nothing I can do about it. Is that what happened? Isn't it the sovereign God? Is that what happened? Or do you have anything to do with it? Huh? You know, there's a name in Hebrew called Ogechuku Kamma. You know that name? The my brother's name. God's time is the best. I have mixed feelings about that thought. As long as it is being said with revelation. Because sometimes we take the concept of God's time. And we use it as an excuse. It's not his time. But the Bible said his season. So what makes it his season? Is it what he has preset? Or do you have anything to do with it? My question. Who says they have anything to do with it? So who says God has set it and that's it? And who has refused to vote? There are no cowards in the house. You must have an opinion. So who says they have anything to do with it? More has that coming up now. And who says God is sovereign? He has set it and that's what it is. But one one bold person there. Only one person. I believe it is a combination of both. I believe God has an appointed time. But I believe that appointed time is influenced by three things, at least. And there may be more. Are you following me, Tim? I believe God has an appointed time. But you see, God knows everything about us. And God knows what we are going to do. God is not the reason why we do the things we do. God is not responsible for our actions. But there's nothing we do that takes God by surprise. God is aware of every step we're going to take. Even the ones he did not inspire. So God rules. So there's an appointed time, but it's influenced by several things that we can do. First thing, that appointed time, I believe, is guided by our capacity to receive. Everybody say capacity. His season in your life, his season for the rain, his season for the manifestation is guided by your capacity to receive. If certain things come to you and you're not ready to receive them, you might walk right past them and not know that they are yours. True? So there is a period to build your capacity to receive from God. And I believe in TCC, that's what we've been doing. God, by his word, by the prophetic word, by prayer, has been building our capacity, and now we're ready to receive the rain. I said we're ready to receive the rain. It is guided by your capacity to receive. Let me show you a scripture. Next on 
fresh dew. There will be an outburst of testimonies. An outburst. Back to back to back to back. Back to back to back to back. Like a dam that has been let loose. So shall it be. Glory be to God. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.